I have the Lincoln Scent on one side and a Mercury Dime on another side. Do I have a rare dual denomination coin here? Stay tuned to find out. But first, here's our Coin Help You community right here. You can find it at coinauctionshelp.com. If you need help with your coins, come over here to the community, join, post your image, post your question, or just scroll through and check out all the different information we have available. Also, coinshop.com. This is my website for my coin shop. If you'd like to purchase, support the channel, support my business. We have all kinds of coins up that you can take a look at and maybe purchase. So check out PortsmouthCoinShop.com as well. So I have some coins here I'm going to show you, and we're going to look at them up close. And they would appear at first, maybe they're dual denomination, or there's some rare error, or, I mean, when you've got a penny and a dime, and one on one side, one on the other side, it, it gets your attention. So we're going to take a closer look at these. Okay, here's the coin that I was showing you at the beginning of the video. As you can see, it's a regular Mercury dime, it appears to be. And it has, looks like copper around the edge of it. And if you turn it over, then it is a Lincoln cent. It's a Lincoln wheat cent, actually. And a lot of people are like, man, look at that. That's got, you know, one coin on one side, one coin on the other side. That's got to be rare. It has to be a mint error. No one could do this. I mean, how could they cut that like that? Well, I can tell you right now that this is like a magician's coin. Someone glued this mercury dime inside the cutout of the Lincoln wheat. And this does not happen at the mint. This is not how dual denominations happen. Matter of fact, you know, dual denominations is actually just a nickname for a coin that was overstruck on another coin. And we'll take a look at those in a minute. This is two different alloys. You have the silver 90% and you have the bronze over here. And that is impossible. It can't happen during the minting process. Two bonded coins like this with different alloys, different designs. I mean, they're not too far apart as far as the years are concerned, but still, this is just not something that happens at the U.S. Mint. A lot of people think, well, how in the world could they do that? Well, here's another one, as you can see. But here's the inside. It's what it looks like. You see all those, basically it's a circular grooves. It's almost like someone could have used a lathe. It looks like this was glued in there at one time. There's a little bit of glue inside of it. I can't think of any reason someone would do this other than to fool someone, to play a trick on them, do a magic trick or something like that. But you can see the intricate lathe lines it appears to be. Someone in the comments could correct me if I'm wrong on that, but that's what it looks like to me. And it would take a very fine, small bit to do that. The, and they just fit right inside each other. And then here's another one. This one, I mean, it appears to be a slightly damaged uh, barber quarter. And obviously when you turn it over, it's like that. And this will actually fit, almost fit, let's put it that way, a worsting quarter. So that you could have a worsting quarter struck if I glued it in there on a barber. And like I said, you can use them, like I said, trick coins. You can use them as maybe to fool somebody. I mean, it's kind of like a, it is kind of like a talking piece. You can actually put a Roosevelt dime in that one. But that's just basically what they are. They're just damaged coins. Damaged coins that are kind of cool, but they don't come from the U.S. Mint like this. And let's take a look over here at actual dual denomination. So when you're looking at this, you want to see this right here. If you think you have an overstruck coin, this is a Lincoln cent struck on a 2000 dime. And here's another example. That's what you want to see. And you can scroll down, look at heritage sold auctions. You can see all of these uh, double denomination, dual denomination, and check out what they look like. Here's an interesting one here. Looks like it was overstruck. I see it says that the Susan B. Anthony dollars overstruck on a 78 Jefferson nickel. This is what it would look like. This one sold for $15,000. No wonder people want their coins to be worth a lot of money. <laughs> no wonder they want them to be the double denomination. But this is what it should look like right here. So I hope this helped you learn about what a dual denomination looks like and what it doesn't look like. And thanks for watching my latest video. Please hit the sub button and the bell to get all notifications. And have a great day.